this is the back rooms. They're known for their terrifyingly good atmosphere and the subtle hints that you might not be alone. But the wonderfully talented game devs on the internet had a slightly different approach to this genre. So basically I'm saying they kind of completely f***ed it up. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. I'm making a backrooms horror game the wrong way. And I'm only giving myself 6 hours because I like to suffer. And if I somehow fail this challenge, I'm going to shave my head, change my name, and move to a South American country. Because that would be embarrassing. But in order to do it wrong, we need to understand what makes one of these games so bad. So after some research, I noticed that you, uh, you walk. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally all there is to the gameplay. The level design doesn't exist, it's probably randomly generated for all I know, and they add as many filters as they can possibly find to cover up the fact that they took everything off the Unity Asset Store. And for the sake of immersion, they make you intensely motion sick with their camera movements. But by far the most important part, whatever the f*** this is. Seriously, is anyone actually scared of this bent paperclip looking dude? Like, it's literally a bowl of spaghetti if it was black and had arms and legs and there was no bowl. So now that I'm a bit of an expert at bad backrooms games, I figured out the most groundbreakingly generic idea. You're stuck in the backrooms for absolutely no reason, so you decide to walk around aimlessly searching for a way out while my wired earphones chase you. I'm going to build lots of tension and- Who invited this guy? We use jump scares. Oh, you don't think they're scary, huh? Huh? Yeah, bet you just shit yourself right there. <laughs> Speaking of, let's start with the monster. Sorry, entity. I want to make my own rendition of the paperclip dude, even though the black spaghetti isn't scaring anyone. Remember, I'm making this game the wrong way. I just gathered some reference here of him, so I'll draw out my idea and then I'll try justify whatever abomination I create. This is my final drawing here, <laughs> I, I think it's pretty creepy, and it's still keeping that bone chilling aesthetic, so... I think I'm on the right track. I think it's time for modeling. No, 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 no. I mean 3D modeling. The reason I designed him this way was to give the monster a story too. Now, I know this is a bit advanced for a game like this, but in horror, it's really important to give the bad guys a story too. It looks injured, dragging its legs behind himself, with its right arm in sort of a seized up pose, and its neck almost stuck to the side. And it gets you thinking for about 5 seconds until you remember you're playing a shitty backrooms ripoff. But you think about what down here could have possibly injured him, and I'll answer that question a little bit later. I'm gonna name him Papercrip because he looks like a paperclip and he's crippled. <laughs> <laughs> My creativity has absolutely peaked. I won't show you Papercrip just yet because you'll fall out of your seat and you won't be able to finish the video. So I'll work on the gameplay part of the, uh, the, the, the game. So let's start with the environment. So this should be pretty easy, because whoever lives down here clearly doesn't go to Ikea, so I only need to make the back rooms, and not any back furniture. <laughs> I'll start with your granny's favorite sickly green wallpaper, a carpet, and a ceiling with lights. Oh, and I'll call up Hollywood and ask for their Mexico filter. They just told me that I have to slap some yellow onto the screen like this, and oh, my job here is done. We also need the cliche flickering lights to induce the slightest unease that you've ever felt in your life. But before we do any level design, I think we need a player. I'll quickly add a bean, put a camera on him, and do a really exciting coding montage. Woohoohoo! How cool was that? Bet that made you want to code. So I added walking, looking around, and oh, would you look at that? That's all a backrooms game needs. God forbid we make anything unique for this game, and hmm, do we think running is a little too much gameplay? Yeah, that would definitely be too innovative. Still not getting that VHS vibe though, so I'll play around with the effects a little bit, and okay guys, I'm not trying to brag, but I f***ing nailed it. I mean, it really makes you wonder how little time the other devs spend on their game, since we're only an hour and a half into my game, and it already looks better than theirs. Or maybe I'm just a god. Oh, what's that? You you don't feel motion sick yet? Fuck you, I just recorded myself walking across my house, tracked the motion data into Blender, and used it as an animation on the camera. That never happened. What never happened? Nothing. So that didn't work very well, and I decided to go with a different method, but I actually got really stuck here, and I didn't know what to write, so I just read some documentation, and <laughs> there we go. 
<laughs> Guys, I wasted so much time on this, but it's making my stomach turn looking at it, which means I did a very good job. I also stole some code from my game Omnipresence, which you should definitely wish this on Steam by the way, it's a really cool game. Now that we have a super complex character that took <laughs> 20 minutes to make, well that's until I spent 50 minutes on the stupid camera movement, but I think it's time to build a level and introduce that monster. So I had this great idea for the game not having any objective apart from trying to make it out of the back rooms, definitely not because I'm lazy or anything, it's to create immersion. So I'm going to build a level, but first we need to understand how my competition does it. Okay, I, I think I know what they did. So, they first closed their eyes and then they built the level. So, with my eyes closed, I got a little bit carried away and fell asleep because it's f***ing late, but not before I made a GTA-sized map, so good luck finding that exit. So, I kind of forgot to give you a way out, but it just gave me the most evil idea ever. You know the way to get into the back rooms you have to noclip? This should mean that you have to noclip out, which means you're gonna have to check every single wall to see which one you can walk through. Oh, and plus, I'll randomize the position every time you play. I think I'm still accidentally putting too much effort into this game, but we move. Wait, what do you mean it's not gonna be fun? This is immersive walking simulator gameplay, what more could you ask for? Oh yeah, the, the monster's stalking you. In true shitty horror game fashion, we'll make it so that he always knows your exact GPS coordinates and runs towards you no matter what. Oh, and just to mess with you, I'll randomly flicker lights near you to make you think it's nearby. So now Paper Crypt chases us, but he can't catch us yet, and he's really bad at small talk, so I'll quickly make him be able to jump scare you. But back to the super amazing lore, what hurt Paper Crypt so badly, and why haven't we run into it yet? Well, that's because this entity lives in your walls, and there's holes in certain places where let's just say... You don't want to stand near, and I'm not gonna let the player see this monster, but he's there, trust me. Or don't, and just stand near it like an idiot. <laughs> We still haven't seen Paper Crip catch you, so I'll just stand here and wait for him to murder me. Oh no, not the subscribe button, help me hit it out of the way so we can see the monster. Woo, thank you. And now, are you ready for permanent hearing damage? I mean, is it even a bad horror game without unnecessarily loud noises? Turns out he's actually a bit too scary because I've been watching some of these other jump scares from other Backrooms games, and let's just say that. <laughs> One thing I found cool from these videos is the death screen, so I'll just make sure nobody's looking and uh, yoink that, thank you very much. Paper Crip's movement doesn't look great at the moment, so I made whatever this is, and it's gonna do fine, I think. In my opinion, the most important part of a horror game is its sound design, so I'll work on that a little bit, but it's 1am, which means everyone's asleep. This'll be fun. I need to make dying more scary, and I was originally gonna record myself dying to get that authentic sound effect, or go to the back rooms and record real ones, but I have a friend called freesound.org that will do just fine. My neighbors already hate me from this last video. I spent the last 40 minutes making sound effects, and I've never been so immersed in my life. I have to do a couple more things and I only have an hour, so wish me luck. Okay, it's 2.47 and I'm finished, and I even made a trailer which perfectly shows off how fun Backrooms games can be. Yeah, I think you've seen enough. Alright, let's play this game and see if it lives up to the alarmingly low expectations of this genre. Welcome to Really Scary Walking Simulator Backrooms Edition 2023. Believe it or not, I actually didn't put this game on Steam for $70, so you can play it in the description for free. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm kinda mad at myself because I made this game as a joke, but it actually turned out pretty well, and I unironically made a good Backrooms game in 6 hours while trying to show you how lazy some of the other ones are. So basically, I'm just going to show you what it's like to win. Basically, it's a wall with red- <laughs> As I was saying before Paper Crypt so rudely interrupted me, there's a wall with red dots on it, and then you just have to find it and walk through. Pretty simple, right? So basically, uh, I think he's off to my right here. Uh <gasps> oh, I finally found one of those walls. To okay, so it's really cool. Literally, all you do is you just walk through, and I just found to the pool rooms. Fuck! 